Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. It is great to see you all and it is time I looked around like I was actually seeing anyone. I'm not. It is great to be here today. That's a better way to say that. Hi. Yes. Today's video is an unhaul. I went through my bookshelves and I am purging. If the purge the horror movie was set in this house, the victims would be the books on my shelves, okay? So I went through my shelves and I was trying to be as ruthless as possible. So you're gonna see a lot of favorite books on this, in this unhaul. Um, and I mean true favorites, like five out of fives, favorite romances, if you catch my drift. Lots of mysteries, lots of general fiction, some short story collections, memoirs. I am trying to just just do a bit of spring cleaning in the winter. You know what I mean? So I preface all that by saying that if you see a book on this list where you're like, wait a second, didn't you love that one? I probably did. <laughs> there are so many books on this list that I never ever thought I would unhaul, but I've realized something over the last few months and that is I love eBooks. <laughs> I love them. I love getting them for free through my library and getting them delivered to my e-reader and just consuming a romance or a mystery or whatever it is and then saying, there you go. I've, I've read it and you can take it back now. Someone else can read it. I have just fallen in love with my e-reader. So a lot of these books you're gonna see are books that if I ever plan on rereading them, they're either gonna be eBooks or I've already listened to the audiobooks and they were amazing. And so if I'm ever gonna reread some of these, it's just gonna be from the beautiful audiobook that I've already experienced that I thought was wonderful. An example of this, just so you know where we're standing in this unhaul, hold on. An example of this is Malibu Rising. This is a book that I've read twice in 2021 and I loved both times. The sibling dynamics, the family drama, the timeline, the writing, I loved it. I think it's so good. But this book is narrated by Julia Whalen, who's my favorite audiobook narrator. Hence, the next time I read this book, it's gonna be with the audiobook. I don't need to physically own it anymore in order to get something out of the book, you know? And so I thought, you know what? It was a great book I read in 2021. I already know the audiobook is excellent. And so it's time to gift wrap this, put it in a li little library and let someone else enjoy. So that is another part of this video is that once I'm done telling you about some of the books I'm unhauling, I'm then going to time lapse me gift wrapping them. Not all of them, but I'm gonna gift wrap a, a handful of them, maybe like 10, 20, maybe 30. I guess we'll see how many paper cuts I can sustain until I give up. But I'm gonna try to wrap a bunch of these and then drop them off at little libraries in my neighborhood. So, Whoever is walking up to these little libraries has a little bit of a gift, but also a little bit of a mystery. You know what I'm saying? And I hope a lot of people in my neighborhood get some literature joy over this month. So let's just jump in. Let's, let's take a look. Where are we gonna start? Um, I mean, I already showed you this one, Malibu Rising. Really great family dynamics, really great sibling relationships and strife and tension. But I, I already love the audiobook, so don't need it. Here's another one that I actually haven't read yet, but I already own a copy. So instead of just hoarding both copies, I'm gonna, gonna donate one to the neighborhood. And that is Sarah McLean's Bombshell. I really wanna read this. I really wanna read it in December specifically because it's just giving me like, Victorian, but like that pinkish red silk is giving me winter. Um, and the back, I mean, let's just take a moment to talk about it. Jesus. Um, anyway, I'm really excited to read this. It's just that I already own a copy. So there we go. The next on haul is Float Plan. This is a romance that I read in August or September. I didn't end up loving this one. Uh, I thought that the concept was cool, right? Like this girl is going on this boat ride across the Pacific Ocean and she needs someone's help. And so she hires this Irish guy to help her set sail. 
the problem I had with it is the depiction of mental health in this book. It just didn't feel like it was something I could empathize with and it made me feel a little alienated. So even though I didn't enjoy it, I've seen many people love this one. And so I'm hoping by unhauling it, someone else can find it. They can see this like ocean boat romance and just love it. That's the hope at least. That's why, that's why I'm unhauling it. All right, another Taylor Jenkins read that I am donating that's also narrated by Julia Whalen is One True Loves. I read this a couple months ago. It was fine for what it was. I kind of wish that it was longer because I think there could have been more to unpack, but ultimately it was fun to read. I got what I needed out of it. I don't need to read it again. The basic story is that there's this woman who's married and she's like fully in love and uh, her husband goes on this helicopter to go on this work thing and um, the helicopter crashes. And so everyone assumes that he died because they can't find him. Um, and then a couple years later, she ends up moving on, she gets engaged and then her husband comes home and now she's pulled in two different directions of like her long lost love, but also her new love, which is also a valid love. Anyway, that's the story. I thought it was fun for what it was. I just wish it was longer, but hopefully someone else picks it up and loves it. Okay, next one is another book that's narrated by Julia Whalen, but is not written by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And that is Kristen Hanna's The Four Winds. I read this, I don't know when, I think June. And I really, was it June? I think it was June. Maybe it was earlier than that. Um, but I really enjoyed it. It's a long bitch, okay? It's a lengthy one. Um, but there's so much to unpack. I didn't think I was gonna cry. I ended up doing just that. And um, I mean, it's great. It's all about the Dust Bowl and um, uh, what? <laughs> the Great Depression, I believe, right? Great Depression, right? 1921, so not that, all right, 1934. So yes, Great Depression, Great Plains, the Dust Bowl, all happens in this. Um, big mother-daughter energy happening in this. And so, I mean, it's pretty excellent. I have only seen good things about this book and I read it and I really enjoyed it. And again, didn't think I was gonna cry, but did just that. So hopefully someone in my neighborhood cries as well in a good way, in a way that says, I love reading, you know, great. <laughs> okay, the next three books are books that I tried to sell back to my used bookstore. Hi, why won't you, there we go. Um, I tried selling them back to my used bookstore. My used bookstore said, thanks, we're good without them. And I said, excellent. Um, but these are three pretty popular thrillers that I, I've read them, I know how they end, I don't need to reread them, and that is The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins, Into the Water by Paula Hawkins, and then Right Behind You, which actually, can I be honest, can I give you a truth? I don't think I've read this one, but I've owned it for maybe five years, and every time I look at it, I go, I'm not gonna read this, um, but I was just keeping it to be like, well, one day I will. I don't think that day's ever gonna come. So best I let someone else enjoy it. Um, and then these are just two really popular thrillers. So hopefully whoever picks these up doesn't already know the twist in this one because it is a movie. Um, and so when they pick it up, oh my God, I just realized that I can put these in the little libraries and maybe for anyone who's doing Christmas shopping, they can find like some of these popular books and gift them. That's fun. All right, this next book is headline news. So call the media and tell them that the Times has their headline for tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, basically I'm unhauling the hating game. It's just time, my friends. This is a book that, okay. I've read this book three times now. It is my comfort read. I understand some people don't love it. I am one of those people who's just like, yes, please. I need romance, I need tension, and I need comfort. And that's what this book, what, that's what this book does for me. Not this bug, this book. This book is so comforting to me, uh, but here's the deal. The first time I read it was with the audiobook, which is excellent, by the way. Really love the audiobook for this one. The second time I read it was with the ebook, 
through Libby. The third time I read it was through the ebook through Libby. So I have never physically read this book. <laughs> I, you can tell because the spine is not cracked and I crack all of my spines. Um, but I bought this book as a symbol of, I love this book, so I have to own it. And here we are like a year and a half after reading it for the first time. And I'm realizing I don't have to own it. Who says I do, right? The audio or the ebook and audiobook combo is just as good as the physical. Can I also be honest with you? Can I just for a trifle be honest? Um, the new edition of this book, <laughs> maybe now I'm being truthful. Um, the new edition of this book, which I don't know if I'm gonna buy it just because you know I'm unhauling it, so why buy the new one? Um, but the new edition has the epilogue written into it and this one does not have the epilogue. So I'm saying that if you're interested in buying The Hating Game at any point, get the new version of it. It does not look like this. It's slightly different. It's still blue, but it looks a little different. Uh, and it basically just has this really cool epilogue at the end with a strawberry field and it's really cute. So anyway, I hope someone else picks it up and they're like, what is this? Or the movie's coming out in like however many days, we're so close to it. And they'll go, wait a minute, isn't this gonna be a movie? Maybe I should read the book first. Which I think you should, because I'm not sure how the movie's gonna go. But <laughs> Anyway, um, yes, it's time to part ways. So there you go. Hello everyone, is this just a Julia Whalen sponsored video? Cause we've got another one that's narrated by Julia Whalen that I'm unhauling because the audiobook is just too good. And that is People We Meet on Vacation. This was a romance that I read over the summer. Super sweet, friends to lovers. Well, actually more like friends to enemies to lovers. Um, and it was really sweet. And it's basically these two, the two main characters just go on a bunch of vacations together over the course of however many years as friends. And then they have a huge falling out on one of their vacations and they don't speak for years. Um, and then they're kind of forced or not really forced, but it just happens where they're on a vacation together. Um, and so I really enjoyed this one. Again, it's narrated by Julia Whalen. So I'm good. <laughs> you catch my drift. I'm good. All right. Next up, we've got two books that are pandemic virus based that I read during this godforsaken pandemic and really enjoyed both of them. They're very different from one another, but it is cool that they both fall within the pandemic virus fear kind of storylines. So anyway, both of these were great, but Either I'll just pick up the audiobooks or I'll just pick up the ebooks the next time I want to read them. And that is Station Eleven and Severance. Station Eleven is getting turned into a TV show. Didn't know that until literally today when my friend Jess told me that the trailer was out and I went, what? <laughs> Actually, maybe I had heard something about it, but I did not know that there was a trailer out and I completely forgot because wow, that trailer was phenomenal. The song that they chose was great. Anyway. Both of these have to do with pandemics. This one really focuses on um, our main character continues to go to work through a pandemic where everyone has stopped going. So she's basically in this publishing house by herself, continuing to work despite the fact that she's the only one there. And then it's paired with moments of going back in time to before the virus, after when the virus um, has taken over when she's left her office eventually. So this one's really great because it kind of talks about, you know, kind of survival and the industry of publishing. Like it's just, it's really interesting. Uh, this one has to do a lot with the same concept of before and after and during and um, the moments leading up to it, the moments during the outbreak and then what happens like 20 years down the road or 10 years down the road. Um, this one travels a lot more. So you're in the, in the throes of more characters, whereas with this one, you're really just with your one main character who's meeting other people. But this one has quite the cast of characters. It's all over the place. It's really wonderfully done. I need to take the stickies out of this, but they're both really great. And if you're interested in reading a pandemic book, which might not sound like the time to do it, but is oddly comforting. <laughs> It's oddly comforting and terrifying at the same time. So I loved both of these, but 
someone else will find them and I hope they love them. I just realized I talked about like three books and then I checked the mirror and my lipstick had smeared. So we're gonna jump back into these two books I just talked about and see if I'm able to salvage some uh, film. <laughs> okay, basically the next three books that I'm unhauling are three horror thriller novels that I, I've read. And at least for me, once I've read a thriller or a mystery, I know how it ends. I, I don't need to re-experience it. I just don't feel the drive to reread it um, unless I'm reading it for school or for like a buddy read or for the book club or something. Um, but for the most part, once I figure out the twist of a book, I am kind of good, right? I don't need to reread it. But the three horrors that I'm actually thinking I probably won't drop off at a little library, I'll probably end up just selling it to my local used bookstore because the local used bookstore will put these in the genre, the genre bookshelves, right? Like they'll, they'll put them in the respective genre. Whereas if you just pick these book up, books up in a little library, you won't be expecting the true horror that will meet you at Heaven's Gates. So the first one is The Troop. If you've read it, you understand why I wouldn't want to put this in a little library for just any old person to like pick up, right? I mistakenly was eating spaghetti when I first read this. <laughs> Do not recommend it. Don't eat anything worm-shaped when you, <laughs> when you <laughs> read this for the first time because it's grotesque. But it's basically about some Boy Scouts that go to this island with their like Eagle Scout guy. Um, and so they go to this island to just do like Boy Scout things for a weekend, like make some fires and just survive on this island. Um, and then this horrible parasite uh, gets on the island somehow and it's disgusting and brutal. Um, it was an excellent horror truly horrifying and graphic in my opinion. Um, but you know, I know how it ends. I don't need to own it. The next one, which again, probably will end up selling back to my used bookstore because I don't need uh, like a child to pick this up and see what's inside. Uh, but that is Karen Slaughter's Pretty Girls. I already talked about this one. It's super brutal. It's grotesque. It's really sexually violent, so definitely not for the faint of heart. I do not recommend this for everyone. I really don't recommend it for anyone, <laughs> unless you know what you're getting into, but it's gross and I don't wanna drop this off and then have someone see the cover and be like, wow, what a pretty locket. I'll rate it. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So uh, probably won't go in a little library, but I know what happens. I don't need to reread it. And then this one isn't that horrifying. It gets a little creepy at the end, but it is a thriller. Um, I actually feel okay about putting this in a little library because it's thrilling, but it's not grotesque in my opinion. I don't think it's grotesque. And I think once you read the back, you know what it's about. But um, anyway, it's The Hole. I read this in like April or May, I don't know, but I really enjoyed it. It's really short and sweet. It's all about this guy who gets into a car accident and um, is completely paralyzed in that car accident. And his mother-in-law has to take care of him from then on out because his wife died in the car crash. Um, and the mother-in-law, let's just say, is not helping him get better. In fact, she is sabotaging his healing process. So yes, there we go. All right, next we have a classic, which I have shown this book cover many times on my channel. Um, and I always talk about how beautiful it is and how I love it. And it still is beautiful. And it was an excellent book, but I already read and annotated a different version of this book for school. And so I don't want to keep this version of it just to have it. I'd rather give this back to the neighborhood and um, have someone else experience it. Anyway, it's Dracula. It's Dracula. I read this for class, thought it was excellent, really fun, uh, really gothic. It was mainly fun to talk about in class, um, but I had a great time reading it. And again, I already annotated a different version, so I don't need this version. And I think it'll make someone's day. Hopefully this could be a Christmas present for someone, right? Like there's like a parent walking around and they're like, oh my God, my kid just got into reading. Maybe they'll like Dracula. I don't know. One can wish, 
on these things. All right, the next two books are kind of a duo written by two different people, but written by father and son about a similar life experience, and that is Beautiful Boy and Tweak. Tweak is about the son's perspective on his addiction, and Beautiful Boy is about the father's experience with his son's addiction. I read both of these in like 2019. I thought they were great. Uh, this one is particularly heavy on the descriptions of what addiction feels like. This one feels more like science and fact-based about trying to understand addiction when you're watching it in someone else. Um, the movie Beautiful Boy was based off of this book called Beautiful Boy, um, but Tweak is such a good perspective on the son's point of view. So I'd say read both of them. Since this was a movie, I think it'll catch a lot of people's eyes in the little library. So yeah. Speaking of excellent audiobooks, um, the book itself is excellent, but the audiobook was so spectacular that I don't need to own the physical book anymore because I know the next time I read this book, it'll be with the exceptional audiobook. And that is Sharks in the Time of Saviors. I read this over the summer, I think July or August. And um, I picked it up and I was like, the cover keeps calling to me. Let's just see what this is all about. And then I devoured it. I could not put it down. I was so invested. I was so intrigued. It's very family-based. It's very sibling heavy. And I love a book about siblings. So anyway, the book is fantastic. The audiobook is great because each chapter is told from a different sibling and each sibling gets their own narrator. So you get a different voice for every character and it's really great. And I just thought it was a stunning performance and so much emotion and vulnerability were in the performances of the audiobook narrators. So someone else will pick this up in those little libraries and they'll find a new favorite book, hopefully, because it's so good. Um, but I'm going to listen to it as an audiobook the next time I re-experience it. So there we go. All right, four memoirs that I'm unhauling because I believe every single one of these is narrated by the author. Um, so if I'm gonna reread them, I'd rather just have the famous person read their own memoir to me instead of physically owning them. Anyway, I've got four of them here. We've got Tina Fey's Bossy Pants. I listened to this as an audiobook first and really liked it and then bought the book and didn't physically read it. So I like have it just to have it but I originally had listened to it, I believe. Um, and so again, it's narrated by Tina Fey and her humor comes out a lot in the audiobook version. So someone else can find it and love it and laugh at it. The next one is Aziz Ansari's Modern Romance. This was a really incredible book. Um, I picked it up because I thought it was a memoir for Aziz Ansari and instead it's like a complete study of online dating and like Tinder and websites and finding love in the digital age. And it was so random and so incredible that that's what he did with his first book. So um, I think it's his first book. Anyway, it was really, really funny because he's hilarious, but I believe this is narrated by him. I'm actually not sure if it is. In any case, I read it and I thought it was great, but I don't think I'm ever gonna physically read it again. So there it goes. Then we have Brian Cranston, A Life in Parts. Uh, I think these are short stories from his life, not just an overall memoir. I think I read like three or four of them and was like, I'm not as interested in this as I thought I would be. And then I've held on to this for like four years. So I'm unhauling it because I, I don't need it anymore. And I think Brian Cranston is the one that narrates it. So if I ever want to, I can just listen to him tell his own stories. So there you go. And then the last memoir is Amy Poehler's Yes, Please. Uh, I really, really loved this book. I thought it was really cool learning about her career in comedy and her time on SNL and her time before and after SNL and her marriages and everything. So, or her marriage. I think just her marriage at this point. <laughs> I think it was just one marriage, I think. Anyway, um, I really liked it. And inside there's like pictures from her life, but again, I'm not gonna physically read it again. So no need to hold on to it. All right, two more kind of horror 
thriller type books that it's just time to part with the devil all the time. This one actually is interesting because it's not just that, okay, I read it and I know what happens. It's that this book is so close to the movie. <laughs> It's like almost the same. <laughs> Obviously you lose some detail, but like the story's basically the same. And so when I want to re-experience the story, I probably won't even reread it. I'll just re-watch it <laughs> because I think the movie was really good. So great book, great movie. And that's that. The next one, which is funny because I actually haven't read the, or I haven't watched this movie yet, but I hear the movie sucks compared to the book. <laughs> and yet I'm unhauling it, is uh, I'm thinking of ending things. This one made quite a splash last summer, I think. And then the movie came out last fall or winter, if I'm getting that correct. Um, but it was super creepy and I loved the audiobook. The audiobook is what made it so much creepier to me. So I don't need to own the physical book and hopefully it scares the shit out of someone else. What can I say, right? What can I say? All right, next up, uh, this is one of the more surprising ones to me, right? I know that The Hating Game's on here. I know Malibu Rising's on here. I know my really pretty copy of Dracula's on here. I know these things, but these books are very sentimental to me. And so I'm surprised that they've made this list, but it's also time. And that is the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series. Hi, those are upside down. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series. Um, it's also funny because in a haul, book haul earlier this year, I went and specifically sold my old copy of the first book so I could get this copy so that it would match this copy of the second book. And I was like, I just loved these books so much. I'd rather have them match. And here we are like six months later and I'm getting rid of them all. Okay, I had to restart the fire and reapply my lipstick. So if I'm looking like a hot mess, it's because I am. Uh, anyway, what I was saying is that these books are really sentimental to me because they're like the first thrillers that I read and they were like the first, my first introduction into the thriller genre and kind of reignited my love of reading. And so I read the original trilogy super fast and then I'm also unhauling the next one, like the fourth one in the series, but it's by a different author. So um, it's just one of those things where I'm like, I'm holding on to them just for the sentimental feeling when really, I'll just rewatch the movie if I really, or the movies, if I really want to experience the story because those exist. And I'd rather just watch Rooney Mara and Daniel Craig again and again and again, rather than read the entire series over again. <laughs> all right, my friends, we're almost at the end. I haven't even talked about all the books in front of me. And then I have like three more stacks in my office, but I've been sitting here for an hour filming at this point. So <laughs> I think it's time to wrap this up. I'm just gonna talk about like two more and then we'll call it quits. Next book I'm on hauling, which I don't think a lot of people, I get a lot of questions on if I've ever read this one and I have read it. And that is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. This is this like super fantastical, magic romance, circus, Christmassy, wintry book. And it was beautiful when I read it. Uh, I think I read it like five years ago at this point. Um, and I was also going through like a year or two year reading slump. And this is like one of the first book I picked up when I was getting out of that reading slump. Um, and it was a beautiful way to come back into reading. Uh, so I know a lot of people really love this book. I really loved this book, but I read it like five years ago. I've never reread it. I've never even like started to reread it. I think I talked about wanting to reread it. But I'll just, again, get an audiobook or an ebook. Someone else can enjoy this. And I hope it brings some magic to someone else's life. So, yeah. All right. And the last book I'm unhauling in this video, again, it's not even all of them. That's how much of a purge I was trying to go through, is Will Darbyshire's This Modern Love. Will Darbyshire is pretty popular YouTuber who's engaged to Arden Rose, another very popular YouTuber. And for his first book, he kind of just collected a lot of love letters, love confessions, love advice, and put it into one book. And I thought it was such a clever idea. I thought it was so cool that he did this for like his first book. Cause I feel like when YouTubers get a book deal, sometimes they just do a memoir 
And instead, he was like, I'm going to collect love stories. And I thought it was such a sweet idea. But I just think that this is a book that's going to bring someone else a lot of love right now, especially during the holiday season. Um, or maybe it'll stay until Valentine's Day and then it'll be a beautiful find. But I just think that it's a simple book. It's a short book. And it just talks about love, heartache, and loss. And what else could you want in, in a book? So... Yeah. Anyway, my friends, that is the unhaul. I hope this was fun. I hope it was encouraging for you to organize or purge the shelves. And if you don't want to, then don't do it. This is just something I was inspired to do in the sense of like, hello neighbors, I hope you enjoy a book, but also, Jesus, you have a lot of books right now. Well, let's, let's get them out of here, all right? Anyway, I'm now going to hand you off to a time lapse of me wrapping some of these with some like nice cheery holiday music. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had fun and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.